Spanish explorer Hernando Cortez landed in Mexico, he only brought 600 soldiers with him from Spain. And he faced the entire warrior Aztec nation. And two prior expeditions by other explorers had never even been able to establish a colony in Mexico. But in two years, Cortez and his 600 soldiers conquered an entire country. He knew as an experienced soldier that his nation, his group and the nation he represented would face an uphill battle from the very beginning. He knew it was going to be dangerous, he knew it was going to be difficult, and he knew that facing this nation that they were trying to conquer would terrify his soldiers and that they would want to retreat. So once he got all of his men ashore and all the provisions and the horses, he ordered that all of his ships be burned in the harbor. And the army stood on the shore and looked and watched the ships burn and sink. And they knew that the only possibility of retreat had just disappeared into the Gulf of Mexico. There was only one way to go, and that was forward. I think that when we choose to follow Christ ourselves, we find that we are in very much the same situation. Our past is gone. No need to look back over our shoulder at what was, because what we have to deal with is what lies in front of us. The lectionary passage chosen for today from the Gospel of Luke calls us to consider the cost of discipleship. You know, we love to talk about the benefits of discipleship and the benefits of following Christ, but we tend to sugarcoat the Gospel because we don't want to talk about the cost of being a disciple of Christ. So, this morning, we're going to look at Jesus teaching us a very important lesson. If you'd like to follow, I'm going to be looking at some verses from the ninth chapter of Luke. We'll start with the 23rd verse, because I think we need to hear these few verses before our designated passage, so that it all falls into context. So, from the ninth chapter of Luke, beginning with verse 23, I invite you to hear the word of God. Then Jesus said to the crowd, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross daily, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world that yourself lost or destroyed? If anyone is ashamed of me and my message, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns to his glory, and in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. Now let's go down to verse 51, and this is what we hear. As the time drew near for Jesus to ascend to heaven, he resolutely set out for Jerusalem. He sent messengers ahead to a Samaritan village to prepare for his arrival, <clears throat> but the people of the village did not welcome Jesus because he was on his way to Jerusalem. When James and John saw this, they said to Jesus, Lord, should we call down fire from heaven to burn them up? Jesus turned and rebuked them. So they went on to another village, and as they were walking along, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus replied, Foxes have dens to live in, and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place even to lay his head. And Jesus said to another person, Come follow me. And the man agreed, but he said, Lord, first let me return home and bury my father. But Jesus told him, Let the dead bury their own dead. Your duty is to go and preach about the kingdom of God. And then another said, Yes, Lord, I will follow you, but first... Let me say goodbye to my family. But Jesus told him, Anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. 
This ends our reading for this morning. This is the word of God, and it can be trusted. Thanks be to God. So what we see in what I just read to you in our gospel message this morning is that following Jesus is a whole lot more than just packing the law. It's about taking responsibility first and then going with him. Luke points out in the second part of our passage three characters that Jesus came into contact with on his way to Jerusalem. And each one of those fellows thought they wanted to be a disciple. Each conversation that Jesus has with these folks makes them question their ideas of comfort. As a matter of fact, Jesus makes each of those fellows very uncomfortable. Some of the same things that give us comfort in this life today also should be challenged. The first guy that Jesus comes in contact with is obviously impressed with everything that Jesus has done. I don't know whether he saw Jesus take a couple loaves of bread and some fish and feed 10,000 people, or if he saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead, or a widow's son from the dead, or whether he saw him heal a blind man, but obviously whatever he did see and know about Jesus impressed him. He wanted to be a part of it. Because he comes up to Jesus and he says, Hey, Jesus, wherever you're going to go, no matter what you're going to face, I'm right there with you. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to be right there by your side. And Jesus said, That's a great thing. Let me tell you what's going to cost you. Perhaps Jesus was just trying to find out what God's expectations were. But in the end, Jesus said to this man that the cost of discipleship for him meant giving up the copy of his security of everything that he held precious in his life. The lesson for us is that a true follower of Christ must learn to find first and foremost our security in God, not the fleeting things of this world. You know, it's hard for us to understand sometimes, but Real security is not found in our jobs. It's not found in our bank accounts. It's not found in our homes. Being a follower of Christ means surrendering that security to Jesus Christ. And it demands that we understand and accept that God owns all of that. God owns our jobs. He owns our bank accounts. He owns our cars. He owns our homes. He owns our relationships. We have to be willing to give up our security and turn it over to Him. Because all the things that we cherish as symbols of comfort and security actually belong to God. He is simply allowing us to be stewards of the gifts that He's given to us. And like many folks, some of us may be uncomfortable giving up the comfort of our security to be a follower. The next person that Jesus runs into... Jesus reaches out to and invites him to follow him. He had a different issue. He said, sure, I'll follow you. Until Jesus asked him to give up the comfort of his priorities. He told Jesus, I need to go home and bury my father first. But what he was really saying is, let me figure out what my priorities are first, and then if they line up with what your priorities are, I'll join you later. Jesus told him, in order to be a disciple of mine, I have to be your number one priority. I have to be first in your life. There should be nothing to cause us to say, let me do this first and then I'll follow you. How many people have you heard say, you know, when I get my life together, I'll go back to church. When I get it all together, I'll go back or I'll go to church. That's not what he's asking us to do. He's saying, put me first and then let me make the way. There's so many things in our lives today that are begging to be the top priority of our life. And Jesus says, I'm number one. I can always miss, almost see Jesus standing there with that big foam finger on one. I'm number one. So that we don't forget, I'm your number one priority. 
to be a disciple, we have to recognize when things in our lives become more important than Jesus. And then this third guy comes to him. He says, Lord, I'm going to follow you. I just need to run home and say goodbye to my family. I just need to run home and have a going away party. <laughs> Maybe the guy just wanted a second opinion. Am I doing the right thing? we got to check in with my life coach and see if this is where I'm <laughs> supposed to be. Perhaps he wanted to see if his friends and family would approve how they would react. What he really was saying is, I'm not quite ready to give up the confidence of my identity. When we choose to follow Christ, we're given a new identity. We're free to let go of the past. We're free to put down that bag of rocks. We're free to put down that baggage that we've been carrying with us for so long. We're free to let go of the past and live in a new identity. Jesus knew that the young man's desire was to return home simply to hold on to the past. Instead of focusing on what he was gaining, this guy was worried about what he was losing. What good does it do someone... You gain the whole world. Looking back at the past can be dangerous for us. We either look back fondly on the things that we gave up or we get frustrated by how little progress we think we have made. I will have to say that if there is a, what I consider to be the number one problem with the evangelical movement in America is that we spend so much time winning souls that we forget to teach people how to be disciples. We forget to teach people that the past doesn't matter anymore. That we have a new idea. The call to discipleship is not easy. Every, all of us have seen on TV and magazines and newspapers all these big advertisements that say clothing 50% off. These cars are at the lowest price in decades. This cream will take all your wrinkles away. I told them, Tim, I need to order me some Flexiderm. <laughs> Take this pill and lose 30 pounds in seven weeks. And you get all these big, bold claims, but then at the bottom of the ad or at the end of the advertisement on TV, and at the very bottom has this little teeny tiny print that says, these results are not necessarily typical. These results are not going to be the same for everyone. You're picking from the no refund, no return pile. You're getting something out of the scratch and dent collection. But Jesus doesn't hide the truth from the tiny print at the bottom of the page or at the end of the ad where they reel off this whole spiel is so fast you can't understand what they're saying. Jesus is honest. And he puts out up front and out loud and unmistakably at the very beginning of the journey so that we don't go into it blind. We know exactly what we're getting into. Discipleship is following in the footsteps of Jesus. And he's, as he said, it means every single day we have to take up our cross. Every single day we have to surrender. Every single day we have to be obedient. In 1922, Puccini was composing his last opera. And in the middle of composing, he was stricken with cancer. And he told the class that he was teaching at the University of Milan, if I die before I finish this opera, you are my disciples and I want you to finish the job complete this opera for me. And certainly, he did. He died before the opera was finished. It's only about halfway done. 
that the students in his class kept their promise. And the world premiere of Turandot at the Milan Opera House was conducted by his favorite student, famous conductor Arturo Toscanini. And if you've ever heard Turandot, it's absolutely beautiful music. It is. I'm not a huge opera fan, but I love the music. And, uh, it's absolutely beautiful. And the opera reached the point where Puccini had stopped writing, and Arturo Toscanini laid his baton down, and he turned to face the audience with tears streaming down his face. And he said, thus far, the master wrote that he died. Opera House was totally silent. And then he picked up the baton and he smiled through the tears and he said that his disciples have finished the work. He turned back to the stage and finished out the opera. And at the end of the performance, the audience broke into thunderous applause because they had just witnessed the completion of a great work. Folks, if we are truly the disciples of Jesus, we are called to stop making excuses and finish what we came to do. And unfortunately, sometimes that brings us to uncomfortable Christianity. Because we're being asked to sacrifice the comfort of our security, the comfort of our priorities, and the comfort of our old identity. You're called to live uncomfortably sometimes if we're truly 